still. Let's start with uh, the race for fourth place. Aston Villa, Tottenham Hotspur. This one ended 4-0 in favor of Spurs. Did you see that coming? Ooh, Ooh no, not at all. And it, it's not just the score line. It's how good Spurs were in this match. Like, they absolutely tore up Aston Villa at Villa Park, where Villa has beaten the likes of Arsenal, Manchester City, even given Liverpool something to think about. So, I mean, this is not a team that you would think would lose 4-0 at home. Have they played Liverpool at home? No, not yet. I guess I say, at Anfield, they gave them some issues. But, yeah, it's just it's crazy to think that Spurs look this good getting, you know, some of their – players their best players back finally so I'll counter you man i'm gonna say aston villa just looked that bad i didn't like unai emery's lineup he went with a back no. five instead of a back four which he's been playing with mm -hmm. i'm thinking they're in europe european yep. game right before this one i think that mm -hmm. had something to do with it maybe he had some tired players some heavy legs but i didn't like the lineup i thought villa looked flat out of energy and so i i would almost say that was more why they lost that game versus Spurs yeah i mean it good. definitely it definitely has something to do with it right like they they look slow unimaginative in attack they had even, a couple of chances even but the even only watkins yeah. didn't look the same player in this match so yeah i think you're right i think Unai emery got this one all wrong but i spurs just look so good once they got the ball you like they always look like they were going to score once they got into the attacking third so and, you know, God. they had some good goals here from Son, Timo Werner, Madison. Who was the last one? <laughs> Couldn't tell you. It was Brennan Johnson. That's who it was. There you he, go. Yeah, yeah, he was the second goal. Yeah. But they scored two quick goals within three minutes of each other and then a couple late goals there at the end. <laughs> kind of put Villa away. But I guess one of the main talking points was the red card in this game. <laughs> yeah, sandwiched right in between those two sets of goals. Yeah. John McGinn getting a straight red for his tackle on Destiny Udogi. Was it a red card for you? Duh. <laughs> I, okay, so, like, before this happens, I mean, Villa has a perfect opportunity to score, and Ollie Watkins misses it. Yeah. And you can just see from, like, the other side of the pitch – John McGinn just fuming about the fact that he missed. And you could see this tackle coming from, I don't know, 15, 20 yards away. You, you, you knew he was not going say, for the ball. I thought you were going to say 15, 20 miles away, man, because that's about well, probably it was. He yeah, was charging, yeah. and you saw him. He was just going to clean him out. And he kicks it. Like, it was – I think it's a hard, I, a bit of a harsh red. I do think – I guess I would give it red. It's, it's it's violent conduct and intent to injure, but I mean, it's not like he swung his boot at him to clear out his legs. No, he just went through him. No, I think he swung his boot out for sure. He definitely swung his boot out, man. I don't know what you're talking I about. I mean, there. like, it, it's not like a blatant kick. But it, for me, I, oh, it was definitely a blatant kick. <laughs> I, my, is... <laughs> my point is not getting across here, but okay. <laughs> it, it, he kicks out like it's one of those players running away from you. You kick their foot to trip them up. He just went in, I think, with a little too much force, which is why it was a red. But, I mean, it wasn't studs up. I don't think no, Dustin Udogi is actually going to be injured from a tackle like that. No. No, just like and maybe so, the wind knocked out of him like he got hit by a car. Because, I mean, you so can see him. Udogi, he stands right back up and then yeah, realizes, starts oh, moving then oh wait, down. maybe I should <laughs> be hurt here, and he goes back down. Yeah, I mean, there was no, no argument from John McGinn. He was just like, what? What? And then he's like, yeah, okay, that was a red. I meant to do that. He went off. A little brawl ensued. Whatever. But, yeah, it was a red card. It was frustrations. I mean, you could see it in the entire Villa squad. Yeah, it was total frustration. Yeah. <clears throat> so, who has the edge for this last UEFA Champions League spot? I believe currently it's going to the Bundesliga. Okay. So do you think England can get that last spot? Can these English teams start surviving in Europe? Well, we'll see. It's going to be in the later stages of all the European competitions at this point. I mean, it looks like Brighton's out to an Italian team. So Italy's going to get one of them because of 
the amount of teams they've had in the later stages of European tournaments. I mean, they had three, one in each final last season. Still have almost all of their teams in this competition this season, except for, I guess, never mind, that's for next episode. All right, gotcha. Yeah, we'll save it. We'll save it. Okay. Yeah, both teams still have to play the big three, the top three above them, whether it's at home or away. I just, I, I got to give it to Spurs, man. Like, other than those games against the top three, I don't see Spurs, unless they get a load of injuries, I don't see them dropping any points as where Villa still has to play in Europe. They're looking tired already, and Spurs look like they just got a new lease on life. So you're saying Spurs to get that final Champions League spot, that fourth place? Yeah, fourth place. Yeah. Okay. I don't know, man. Spurs have a tough schedule as well. Like you said, their next three games are... Or not next that, three games, but they end, have end of April. End of April, first week of May, they play yeah. City, Arsenal, and then Liverpool at Anfield. So And then Newcastle right before that. And then Newcastle. So it, if they get the momentum going all the way until then, with the way that Villa is playing, I think they could probably jump them. I mean, they do have a game in hand. It is against Chelsea, so it's another derby. That can go either way. I, I just I just can't see this Villa team lasting out of the season. I know I picked them to be my fourth place, well, third place team this year because I picked Chelsea to be fourth, and I'm already over that. I uh, got that very wrong, and so did you. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I hate to say it, but I'm going to go with Spurs. I think so, too. Just I, I do have when, a question for you, though. When all their players are fit, man, they're just they're just tough to beat. They are. And with that said, you know, all their players, they do play all of the teams above them. They're not mathematically knocked out yet. They're only 11 points back first place. Could they still potentially be in the title race? No. <laughs> okay. Did just you to get really that out just there. ask me that? I just had to get no. that out there. I feel no, better sp- about my answer now. No, Spurs are not in a title <laughs> race. Spurs are in a fourth spot race. I mean, I guess they could. Mathematically. Mathematically, they are, but I mean, sure. (laughs) But no, I do not think they're in a title race. We'll see if they can pick points off of either City, Arsenal, or Liverpool. I know they've kind of been a bugaboo team every once in a while for City. Yeah. Uh, They drew Arsenal at the Emirates earlier this season. As we know, they kind of had a bit of an unjust win over, I guess not a bit of an unjust. It was an unjust win over Liverpool. Liverpool. So, but I mean, I, I will ask to redeem my question to kind of follow up on it. Okay. <laughs> will they have final say on who wins the title though? No. You don't think so with no. them playing all these teams right at the back end of the title race? No, I saw that whole thing posed on, you know, social media. I've seen it like, Oh, Spurs have a say in the title race. I mean, not really. I, I mean, I mean Arsenal... if they can beat if they can beat one of these squads, then if not two, then they would definitely have a say in the who wins the title. How does but... that making them have a say in the title race? If, for example, if Arsenal win all their games, and they and Spurs beat Man City and Liverpool, it doesn't matter. Arsenal had the well, final say what, in the title race. What I'm saying you know is, what I mean? if, if Arsenal, let's say, let's say Arsenal lose to City, and okay. they win the rest of their games after that. Liverpool win all their games but lose to Spurs, right? City beat Arsenal see, and lose to so Tottenham. I, like, so I guess I see you're be, saying I, that way. What I'm saying I, is I it see could you're be saying, up yeah. to that game. Yeah. I don't think it will be, though. Okay. Do you think the title will be nearly decided before that point? No. No. Okay. I mean, maybe. I, I don't Aster? know. This is, it's so close. This is It's so yeah. close. This is almost one of those ones, could it be decided on the final day? potentially i i sure hope so i i don't not for my anxiety levels but i i hope so just for the sake of having a great title race down to the end yeah i mean it's already been a great title race i don't think it'll come down to the final day but no at the same time i i I don't think tottenham has a say in anything if i'm being honest (laughs) as far as the title race cheers to that is yeah (laughs) <laughs> concerned let us know on our instagram bruise fc you'll have to check it out make sure you're following us there you can join our facebook group tiktok bruise and banter 
YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Spotify, where all you get, wherever you get your podcasts, give us five stars. Give us a thumbs up, a like. Get your merch at the Redbubble store. And of course, don't forget to check out Acorn Hills Clothing. But on that note, that brings us to the end of this episode. Till next time, my friends. Cheers. Cheers. Today's episode is brought to you by Acorn Hills Clothing Company. Sustainable clothing, biodegradable packaging, tree planted for every purchase, and a percentage of their sales donated to charities. Yeah, and that's not even the best part. They give you these plantable clothing tags with every purchase. Pretty much greatest idea ever. That you is scan awesome. The QR code right here. For planning instructions so make sure you go to www.acornhillsco.com and use bruise 15 that is b-r-e-w-s-1-5 at checkout for 15 percent off and have your tree planted today yes don't forget to use our code bruise 15 at checkout for 15 percent off this is one you don't want to miss guys